In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on choosing your domain name for your website. Then I'm going to show you a good alternative to HostGator, a very uh, reliable uh, web host that's been around for, I believe, 15 years or so. And then we're going to install WordPress at that particular web host. So if you do have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them below in the comment section. Choosing your domain name. I know this is WordPress 101, but here's a few tips on choosing your domain name. It's not rocket science, but you might find these helpful. You can use a branded domain name, which would be something like your business or personal name or local brand or that sort of thing. You can use what is called a keyword rich domain, or you can use as the question marks kind of signify pretty much anything, whatever else the heck you want that contains letters and or numbers. Not sure what the limitations are. I'm sure there are some somewhere. I uh, hear a couple domains of mine that kind of are like that, WPHowTos.com and MyEZWP.com. I chose them just because they're short, kind of catchy and easy to remember, and they have WP in there. It's not trying to rank for WP or anything, just because WordPress, of course, WP stands for WordPress. So having a keyword in your domain, does it still help? In my opinion, yes, it still does. Not like it used to back in, say, up to about 2013, where you could basically just get what's called an EMD, an exact match domain, and rank it just, just basically by having the domain name itself. And you could throw a bunch of affiliate links up there, have hardly any content at all, just maybe some banners and affiliate links, and your site would rank. And Google said, you know, enough of that. So they came out with a algorithm, and it penalized sites that, not just because they were using EMDs, they don't penalize sites for that, but they do penalize sites that don't have good content. So having a keyword in your domain or as your domain still does help, but there is more to it than that if you're trying to get your site ranking on Google, as the saying goes. Now, if you have a local business, having the keyword plus your city that you're located in your domain name does give you a little boost. You do not have to do this by any means, but it still does help. So, for example, that would be something like attorneyinsandiego.com or sandiegolawyer.com, that sort of thing, although those domains are most likely gone. Now, if you have a keyword domain that you're really trying to get in a .com, which is always the best choice, .com, you could try adding a modifier to the front or the back, like best, the, top, etc., etc., you know, kind of use your imagination uh, to find the domain of your choice. If you really are set on a particular domain name and you can't find it in the .com, you could get a .net. That's always my second choice. .org is good for nonprofit organizations. There's a whole bunch of other domain extensions. There's even like a .ninja nowadays and a whole bunch of other ones. Now, as far as an e-commerce site, if you're wanting to build an e-commerce site, having a keyword in your domain can help, but it gets a little tricky with e-commerce. It's kind of the same thing I was talking about. People used to build sites called sniper sites, and they would build a site, for instance, called a blue-green extra small widget for men, widgetsformen.com, I mean, where that would be a particular type of product, and it would rank, of course, for that product name. Google likes what are called authority sites now, and sniper sites don't tend to do too well anymore, but as with anything, your mileage may vary, so that is up to you. Do your due diligence. You can either purchase your domain separately or you can buy it when you buy your web hosting. Here's a place I use, Namecheap, to buy most of my domains. There's also places like GoDaddy and a bunch more. You can buy your domains if you want to buy them separately from your web hosting, but you can get it with your web hosting because most any web hosting company will be more than happy to sell you a domain name. And you can also use Namecheap just to do a little brainstorming because domain names have to be unique so you can find out if you're the main of choice is available just by coming to Namecheap and doing a search on here and doing a little brainstorming. Like I said, Mike's Red Boat will click on suggestions here. Here we go. Mike's Red Boat.com is available for about 11 bucks a year. There's a whole bunch more domain extensions like I was telling you before. So whichever way you want to go, buy, it, buy your domain separately or buy it when you buy your web hosting, it's a good place to come just to do a little brainstorming. And, of course, you are going to need web hosting. Here's a place that I can recommend. I use them myself, one of the two hosting companies that I use in motion hosting. Very reliable, very well established. They've been around for about 15 years. They use fast SSD servers to store your website files. 
SSD stands for solid state drive, I believe. It's faster than the old style servers. Their support is US based. And you can chat with them, email them, call them pretty much any time of the day or night, 365 days of the year. Now, they normally have pretty decent prices, but if you want to get some special pricing on InMotion and go check them out and see what they have to offer, go to myezwp.com, and that will take you to this web page right here, which uh, InMotion made for my visitors. We'll scroll down the page a little bit and check out their three basic shared hosting plans, along with the special pricing you get if you come to my web page. Now, I do receive a commission from InMotion Hosting if you do come to this web page and purchase web hosting, but you're not going to get charged anything extra for doing so. Actually, you're going to get a pretty good discount on your web hosting if you come to my web page. And if you are finding value from my video or videos and are planning on purchasing web hosting anyway, you're going to get a pretty good deal on some very good web hosting if you do purchase when you come to my web page. If you do already have web hosting and are considering changing, InMotion makes it real easy for you to do that by offering you free site transfer of your existing website content with zero downtime. So something to consider there if you are considering changing your web hosting. Let's go ahead and hover over the Order Now button and we'll go through the purchase process for one year of hosting with the launch plan. So I'll go ahead and click on that button. And on this page, you'll see your shopping cart with your plan you're purchasing and the discounts you're getting. And right here is where you can either purchase a domain at InMotion, and I believe it's like, I think $15 a year, or you can do what I normally do and say I already own this domain and type in a domain that you've already purchased somewhere else. I'll do that and click, I'll have to go back one, go like this, and click continue. And they're offering us a special upgrade to the power plant for only a couple bucks more a month. I'm going to click no thanks right now. Here's where you choose where your servers are going to be located, either US East Coast or US West Coast. I'll choose the West Coast because that's where I am located. And you can even have InMotion install WordPress for you, but we're going to say no thanks because we'll go through that uh, WordPress installation ourselves. Very easy process and it's something you probably want to know how to do yourself. So we're going to click continue. Here's where you can enter in your email. Make sure it's a good email, of course, because they will send you your, your account info to that email. I'm going to click continue one more time. And this last page, before you uh, go through the purchase process, is where you just enter in all your account and payment info. And after you do that, then you'll just click on review your order and go through the purchase process. And once you've gone through the purchase process, uh, InMotion is going to send you several emails. Here's one of them with all your account data on here. You have to actually set your own password for what they call your account management panel. So just click on this link right here. And it took me to this login screen because I've clicked on these links before. But it might normally take you to a page that looks something like this where you set your password for your account management panel, AMP. But either way, if it takes you to this screen right here, all you have to do is click this I don't remember my password and go through the process to reset your password. And once you get your password set, of course, you'll have to log into your account. I'll click this I'm not a robot button right here. Urge! Hey, I forgot to mention that if you did buy your domain and your web hosting separately, you will have to connect them together via what are called the name servers. And it's a very simple process. I do have a couple videos. I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I do have a couple videos you could watch for uh, if you bought your domain at Namecheap or at GoDaddy. And it's a pretty similar process no matter where you bought your domain. You can just look it up online too if you want to. Here are the two name servers for InMotion hosting. If you bought your hosting there, your shared hosting, you just use these two right there. If you bought your hosting, say at HostGator, they will send you an email which will include your two name servers you need to use. Very simple process, like I said, but if you don't want to do it yourself, you could even just get your name servers handy and then call up your domain registrar where you bought your domain and say, hey, I need to connect my name servers to my hosting my domain and my web hosting together via the name service, could you do it for me? And I'm sure most places will be more than happy to help you out. And once you've logged in, it'll take you to your account management panel, your AMP screen. This will show you all your account data. If you scroll down just a little bit on the page, it'll show you your cPanel account. And that's what we want to install WordPress. So we are going to click on cPanel. 
you're logged in automatically and we're just going to scroll down the cPanel screen until we see software and services and we're going to click on Softaculous. Then we're just going to hover over the WordPress symbol and click on this install button right there. And this will show you which version of WordPress you are going to install. Generally, it's pretty up to date. This is the most current version of WordPress at the time of this video. Under software setup, you choose your protocol. You basically either want to choose the HTTP or with the www unless you bought an SSL certificate and then you'll want to choose one of these two options which have the HTTPS in them. We're just going to leave it as is. Choose your domain if you have more than one. Right here if you want to install WordPress in a directory most likely you will not want to do that but I am going to because I don't want to install over my main WordPress installation right now so I'm going to install it in a directory but you'll most likely want to leave this area blank yourself your site name which is going to be your site title and your site description that is your tagline you can change these later so I'm just going to leave them as is right now the next section is your admin account section you'll choose an admin username and an admin password just choose something for your admin username besides admin. So I'm just going to type something in here like this. For your admin password, I'm going to hide that so you don't see it, sorry. Just choose something that you can remember or at least go uh, write it down somewhere in a text file or Word document so that you can remember it because for security reasons, uh, uh, InMotion Softaculous is not going to send you this password in an email or show you anywhere else. So make sure you write this down somewhere because you are going to need it. All right, for your admin email, I'm going to change that to this right here. Choose your language, English, no doubt, unless you have a different language. And then, of course, you have some options here. We're going to skip the limited logins, plugins right here. Advanced options we're not going to look at right now. Paste in an email right here so they can email our installation details, but that will not include the passwords. And then I'm just going to click install. All right, that took about 30 seconds or so. Here's our URL that we installed WordPress at. And here's our administrative URL, which is just our WP admin URL, which is just your domain name then a forward slash, and then wp-admin. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, and that will take you straight to your WordPress dashboard. Now, normally, you're just going to have to put in your URL of your site, and then put a forward slash, and then wp-admin, and then log in with your admin username and password. Now, before we get started setting up our site, here is a blog post on my WPHowTos.com site that you may find helpful. It started out as just a way to list some WordPress plugins that I use and recommend, and we are going to go over WordPress plugins a little bit later in the video, but I've started adding more resources to it, so you may find it helpful. There's some sources for royalty-free images, and I even started a simple little checklist down here. This stuff is pretty basic we're going over, but you may find it helpful to have a little checklist when you're first getting started with WordPress. So check out the blog post. 